Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. And on this week's show, we look ahead to this Sunday's fixture away at Castleford as Saints return to the Super League action for 2023. And we reflect on a week that has seen Saints take over the national media because we won a trophy last weekend, Kev. Excellent. Excellent. What a way to start the season. And now we're back into the bread and butter. Round two, randomly as well. But yeah, great stuff. It's round two. And 2,000 tickets have been sold already from Saints um, for the game tomorrow. And I'm assuming a few will have just bought directly from Cass as well, which means it could be Saints' biggest um, away following to Yorkshire in many a year, Kev. Yeah, it seems that way. That's it. I've seen quite a few people on social media uh, chatting about how they're, they're buying directly from Cass. I think Saints have actually put out uh, a link saying that you can only buy them direct from Cass now. Um, so it promises to be a good a good follow for a game on a Sunday lunchtime on Channel 4. Um, yeah, it's good to see people getting in the cars, on the coaches, on the trains and whatever, and getting over to to Weldon Road and uh, and supporting the boys. Yeah, it's it's really good for the club as well. Another game on national television with a massive crowd behind them. Obviously, listen, it's, it's on a Sunday lunchtime. People will be tuning in on the TV. Not a lot on at that point on terrestrial television. They'll turn Channel 4 on and they'll see the world champions playing ferociously backed by Saints fans. And you never know, some companies might come along and think, I want a bit of that. Yeah, you've got to hope that way. You've got to hope that, like you've alluded to it at the start as we were getting national media coverage, that that it's just opening people's eyes to the to the game and hopefully gets that that bit of sponsorship, the funding that that can come from any kind of business, individual, any outlet. Um, it, like it's it's forthcoming and it just kind of as I say, it opens people's eyes to it, starts getting people engaged. And hopefully this isn't a, an opportunity that's squandered like like has been in the past. And I don't mean say it's by that. I mean, rugby league in general. Yeah, I, I think the, the game as a whole um, needed that boost of Saints winning last week. And, and listen, Saints commercially um, and bus- on the business side of the club are, are very well run and and they'll make sure they they seek and take advantage of any opportunity possible as we will get on to later in the show. But yes, cast tomorrow. It's the first game for Saints back um, since getting back from Australia. We're assuming the players will have had a few play uh, a few days off. Um, and Paul Wellens has still been able to to name a strong squad. As listen, we're we're four points behind Warrington. <laughs> Mark it down. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we we can't afford to to fall two way off the pace if, if we if we don't start well. But equally, listen, tomorrow is one game. If we to lose tomorrow, it is what it is. We'll just spank Leeds on Friday instead. But we want to kick off with a win if we can. Yeah, exactly. I think that's it. You you want to start well. Um, you don't want to be starting to have to chase people, but. As you say, because it's not first past the post anymore, because it is a playoff like structure, it doesn't matter too much. It doesn't, doesn't. You need the points on the board because you need to get into that playoff uh, kind of grouping at the end of the year. But one offs like this, as long as you start picking up points after it, it, it doesn't. Um, but you say it's a strong squad. Um, it's probably stronger than some people thought we'd, we'd put out. Um, and it's, it, I think, with everything that uh, Wellows said throughout the, the past couple of weeks, it shouldn't come as a surprise that we've gone so strong because you don't want to kind of take your foot off the gas. We are going for five in a row. We are the world champions. It's It becomes team's cup final and they will be looking to kind of push us and, and get that scalp. Um, so, yeah, listen, I think we're in for a good one. Yeah, it is fair to say that we are everyone's cup final. Yeah, well, it, it's the scalp that you want, because just four in a row champions and world champions now, it we are. 
Have you ever, I think it's a, a boxing term, is it lineal champion? So, oh, like, yes. if, if Cass were to beat us tomorrow, they become world champions, the lineal <laughs> world champions. They get passed around in that regard. Um, yeah. So, yeah, listen, there's a, less than a 1,000 tickets left for tomorrow. It's going to be what is, could be close to a sellout crowd, which is, is only good for the game, especially when it's on, on national TV. Um, it's going to be for many Saints fans who didn't get the chance to get to Australia, the first chance to see the side in competitive action this season. Um, it's one we're really looking forward to. And we'll pull up the squad then, Kev. Yeah, that's it. As you say, it's very strong. couple missing out, obviously, Tommy Makinson um, with the HIA protocols, which is only right uh, after him, him failing it. Uh, James Roby going for a scan and the likes of Will Hoppawati and Iggy Parsi dropping out due to bumps and bruises. Yeah, I did see the um, the lazy, oh, it's a Sunday, Will Hoppawati's not playing. Um, I thought we'd de- completely debunk this myth last season. Last yeah. season, we played five times on a Sunday. The two games that Will Hoppawati was actually fit for, he played in. End of. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, think I, I alluded to it, it last week. I actually said... I didn't see Will Hoppawati playing this week. And to be honest, we'll get on yeah. to it in a minute. I don't see Mark Percival playing either. Um, he's, he's come back from a, a long term injury. Um we need to we've got a big enough squad and enough quality throughout, as that squad shows, that we don't have to flog our players for 30 games a year. We can yeah. we can rest, we can rotate, we can give younger players opportunities dropped into as a sprinkling with the majority of first team players. Um the same with Will Hopwati. He played fair, well 12 times last year. Why are you suddenly going to try and flog him when he's just done two games in Australia and bring him back here and stick him straight out against Cass? It doesn't make sense. Um that's why we've got a squad. That's why we've got the strongest squad in Super League. You don't go out and play your best 17 every week starting from round 1, round 2. Yeah, I get that. Like that's it. Listen, if they're fit enough, I think they play because I think we're, we're hitting the ground running. But you're right, you don't have to flog them. Um, I mean, you asked me before we came on to pick a team that I think would play. Um, and it's as strong as we can go or as strong as I think we'll go. Um, but you're right, we don't have to flog players. We can change it round and drop lads in because a lot of these lads know what it's like to play Super League. You're probably looking at um, from Baxter, Ritz and Delaney. And I know Delaney's played a couple of times, but you're probably looking at them as the the three who haven't played as much. With Sam Royal going off to Hull KR last year, he, he knows what it's about and he knows what it's about in a different environment as well. Um, so you don't have to plug them because you can drop lads in. You're right. So I've gone, Kev. I've gone, Wells bit fullback. Yeah, I agree Ritson with that. And Ritson and Benison on the wings. Mm-hmm. I've gone Ben Davis and Conrad Harrell in the centres. Now, I know you disagree slightly with that one. Yeah, I've gone Percy in the centres. I don't know if Tony might be given uh, a little bit of time with, obviously, having the little one just before he's gone to um, over to Oz. Uh, might be a little bit of paternity leave. Um type thing there of just looking after him, making sure that he gets to spend some some quality time with his little one and he'll be back in and rearing to go uh, against Leeds. Yeah, I, I've got... I, would, I didn't prefer... When we discussed this just prior to coming on, I didn't even think about paternity leave. Um, so, yeah, absolutely no objections the way the club works. If if they want to give him that time, um, they'll add, they may give it him tomorrow. They may just give it in and around over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if Percival isn't to play, you could equally go with Sioni and Davis in the centres as well. Um, you've, you've got so many options in that squad. Yeah, and it's that's it. It's great to see that, we, like you said, pick a team. I started writing three, four different teams down before I stuck to the one that I, I've got here, which I think I said um, last week, all four of the lads who weren't involved in the World Club Challenge game are involved in this game for me. Um, but yeah, that's it. We've got that many options that even one that I started writing out that had uh, John Benison at fullback, Jack Wells being the halves. Yeah, you've got that 
that chopping and changing. I don't think you want to chop and change that much. I think you want to start trying to get your partnerships um, working as they should and getting people used to playing alongside who they should be. But we have got that option where it's needed. Yeah. And um, I've then gone, obviously, Lomax and Dodd and the Harbs. Yep. Alex Walmsley, Joey Lussica, um, nine. Uh, Matty Lee, Sione, Curtis Siren and Knowles. I wonder whether Curtis yeah. Siren might have to get a break this week because I know he did pick up a knock over in Australia. Um, potentially, if he does, you bring um, with Jay Wingfield into the starting lineup or James Bell. Um, and then I've gone obviously my bench at the moment. I've got Norman Wingfield, Bell, and Baxter. I've put Louis as 18th man on the basis that he doesn't need to see the field unless you get three head knocks, um, and it just gives you that extra forward cover if it was required. And the three I've got missing out are Mark Percival, George Delaney and Sam Royal. But equally, would I be surprised if any of them were involved? No. And and I think that's the, the strongest part of the squad for me, Kev, in the yeah. fact that in recent years, you could pretty much say out of your 21-man squad who the four were going to miss out. Yes. Um, with this squad, I think there's that much quality in it and there's that much quality not even named in that squad. Yeah. Um, it's a it's an embarrassment of riches for, for Paul Wellens. It's great how we've been able to kind of get and keep this squad together, isn't it? Um, as you say with the forwards, I've gone Wormsley, Lussick, Lees, Metalchia. Then I've actually got written down Siren and Slash Bell because I don't know whether Kurt will get a week off. Knowles. And then on my bench, I've got Dan Norman, Jake Winfield. I've got Louis on the bench with... Uh, Bell slash Royal and then Baxter as 18th man as a young forward who kind of just gets that feel of, of being involved in, in the match day squad again um, but yeah as you say the, the the fact that we've got and we've brought in the likes of T Ritz and the just allows us to be able to when we're missing Tommy Makinson and Will Hoppawati gives us the option of absolute speed in the team. And if he gets a run of a couple of games and scores tries and defends as well as we, we hope he will, it becomes very difficult to leave that speed out of his team. Yeah. It becomes because people are wary of it. Um, so you're right that the fact that we could name three or four different um, options at on the bench at second row, two or three who could play thirteen. If Morgan Knowles didn't, I think he will because he's missed a little bit of rugby. So, and he's he's young enough to be durable enough to to come back into this. We've got a couple of different wing options, a couple of different centre options, two full back options. It's great to see. It's absolutely great to see. I think when we chat about like when we chatted about our um, the, the player previews as we've gone through. I think it's a big year for the likes of Sam Royal, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him get given a chance early to see how he goes. Um, and it might be, as I say, I've got him potentially named in this in this 17 um, as, as someone who could come off the bench and, and, and kind of show well or where he's up to. Yeah, and I think I think you're quite right. It's a, it could be used as a bit of a measuring stick because, um, as we said, it's a big year for him. He can't be kicking his heels all year playing reserve rugby. He either needs to be playing first-team games or going out on loan elsewhere playing first-team. Um, yeah, and I think I think, I think that's fair. And I think that's what he's going to want himself. I don't think he's going to be one of, like kicking his heels wearing a club tracksuit every week. I think he's going to want to to get out there and get games. And that's it. It could be, as we say... We don't know. We don't know. After dealing with uh, Christian Wolf for the past couple of years and how he kind of approached, this is a learning curve for us to find out what Wello means by his strongest team and, and kind of try and gauge his language and guess, second guessing. But yeah, it's it's a big chance for the players who are involved with uh, a couple of first teamers, or you'd say guaranteed first teamers missing out. I think we're almost playing second guess, third guess, fourth guess. Now, yeah. again, just to, just to throw something else into the mix, um, George Delaney, obviously named in that squad, 
he's been out on um, dual reds last couple of weeks, playing yeah. in tough conditions. I think he was playing. Yeah. Was it Batley? He was playing against, um, and he's and he stood up against big, tough old forwards. Um, yeah. So he's he's battle hardened. He's match ready. He's match fit. Would it shock you if he if he made the bench? It, it, I don't think anything would with this squad, and I, I'd have no objections to. Well, I've got no objection to any of that twenty-one man squad be taking part uh, tomorrow. Yes. Correct, and that's it. I, I think you're right. Um, obviously, seeing George Delaney and seeing um, some of the feedback from the Swinton fans who are like, "We need him every week. <laughs> we want him down at Swinton every week." That shows that a young man's going there, and he's not going to have it all his own way when he's playing against um, these, as you say, experienced lower league players who are going to want to put a shot on him and calm him down and, and show what, what it's all about. Um, but, as you say, he's played two games now. He's got to be... He's more ready than, than potentially some of the others. Moving on to our opponents tomorrow, Kev. Um Always a strong cast team. They didn't get off to the start they wanted to last week. Um, they probably felt they were they were running down some blind alleys to start the fixture, uh, but came back into it late on. Yeah, that's it. They, they kind of ran Hull close, didn't they? Um, and they'll be looking to to build on that against us. And hopefully, I think they'll be hoping that that we turn up kind of with with one eye off this game and still with our heads in Australia. Um, and we've got to be worried that with Cass going until the end of the game and pushing and pushing, that that's exactly what they're going to want to do. As we've said before, it's on Channel 4, so they're going to want to put a number on Saints on TV. Um, they're going to just want to do it for themselves as well in front of a Pax house. <laughs> as you say, they're always, always tough, aren't they? Um, and the last thing you want is is them to kind of, as they did against Hull, kind of come from behind and and kind of do us in the in the last minute. Yeah. Um, as it stands at the moment, obviously, Cass having lost their first game, remain joint bottom of the table. Um, Lee Radford, first chance to see his. Fancy shoes tomorrow, Kev. Which we'd love to he always, see. He always wears good shoes. He He's always... only made um, one change to, to his preliminary lineup that was going to face Hull last week uh, with Greg Eden coming back in to replace Suia Matagi. Albert Vette and Maurice Mustafa could both make their competitive bows, and Gareth Widdop, Jacob Miller, and Jake Broadbent are in line to make their first run out at the jungle. Um, Listen, last weekend's win for Saints was um, a good environment to, to to build for this week. Similar kind of stadiums. Um, but this oh. cast side, the, the more than capable of on the day of, of giving us a game as, as they've showed in, in recent years. Yeah, they've got plenty of um, they've got plenty of experience in the I mean, you look through that nine levels, he, he seems to have been around for absolutely ages. Same with Greg Eden. Jordan Turner, we know exactly what he's about. Gareth Widdop and Jacob Miller are, well, especially Jacob Miller, he's such a clever player. Um, he's always, always dangerous. Um, and that's it, Paul McShane, again, someone who's been a, around for absolutely ages. They've just packed that with a load of experience. Um even going down to like the, the last name in that squad, Liam Watts. I mean, you don't want to kind of leave anyone behind in that. Um, yeah, it's, there's, there's plenty, plenty of, of, of quality in that squad. I think for Saints, we, we've set the blueprints last week, haven't we? Um, yeah. So what we'll be looking to do is to try and get some early points in, on the board and put Cass in a hole early on. Yeah, definitely. That's it. We we don't want to go over the and and kind of find ourselves having to having to come from behind. It's it's not what you want to do. You want to lay down a marker early doors. Absolutely. Right. Kev predictions for the, for tomorrow then. 
I think it will be tight because I think uh, full Castlehood uh, Stadium is is a, a tough place to go. I don't think we've won over there since before uh, 2019. I know we might have missed a couple of games over there, but we've not won over there for a while. Um, I'm going to go Saints by 10. Ooh, I've done Saints by 10 as well, Kev. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think we'll win tomorrow. A um, couple of stats, if I can find them. No, I can't find them. No, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> is it? This is this is the best couple of seconds of this whole show. I want to say. <laughs> it, I want to say it's going to be Alex Pace. Eh, Alex. Alex. Alex Walmsley's two hundred and fifty appearance. Yes. I think if he takes the field, it will be. There you go. There's your stats, stat fans. Yeah. Uh, um. And Will Hopawati, whatever happens tomorrow, will maintain his 100% record of winning in a Saints jersey. <laughs> yes, he will. He will indeed. That and is hopefully a stat we, for you. Hopefully we get to see him um, back on the field soon yeah. enough. Because I, think we'll see we all... I think we'll see him against Leeds next week. Do you? I don't think, he's, I, I don't think, I don't think there's off. an injury there. I think we're just managing manage his minutes and... So we don't get any recurrences of any of the niggles he got last year, and I think you just build him up slowly into match practice, yeah. Um, and come the end of the year, hopefully you have him flying every week. Yes. Right. Um. Good to see us in the media this week. Um. Mr. Makinson and Mr. Wellens both looking at home on the BBC breakfast couch. Um, glad to see Trent Alexander Arnold in the background with a trophy in shot because that's the closest he's going to get to one this season. <laughs> oh. um, what, tell you what, can I just focus? We talk about Lee Radford. Look at those shoes on Tommy. Oh, beautiful. They always go for the socks, white sold. Right? Couldn't find any socks. <laughs> Maybe we're so, just old. Maybe that's the style now. Maybe it is. Maybe we just got dressed in the dark. Maybe we got dressed in the dark. Um, but yeah, obviously, BBC Breakfast, you were on Five Live. Um, we had Lewis Dodd on Sky Sports News with if Jenna Knowles in the afternoon, even if he couldn't hear half the questions. Um, <laughs> and then I think Sky rightly got criticised a little bit last week for their coverage of the World Club Challenge. Um, in the, obviously, they took the Australian coverage and the stream just broke away to the other game, and we didn't even see Saints lift the trophy on, on the Sky coverage. Channel 4 got it spot on. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, in recent weeks, you've seen Sky get criticised for their initial advert um, for the season. Um, but I think they tried to make amends on Thursday. And do you know what? I don't have issues with the actual Sky Sports Rugby League team or the producing team. I think they're obviously... The weighed heavily with the constraints of the finances that Sky give them to produce, yeah. um, and you could see on Thursday they've wanted to do something. They've put a Saints special on. Listen, on probably little to no budget, given how it was interviews pitch sides with um, James Roby, Jack Wellsby, Paul Wellens in the studio, um, but it was well put together, and it it was a good, really good half hour that showcased the achievement that we that we had. Um, so fair play to Sky. Yeah, I, I'm yet to see it. To be fair, I've been away this week. I'm yet to yet to see it. But you're right. It's such a shame for those of us who couldn't make it down to Australia. Um, Channel Four absolutely nailed the coverage. They absolutely nailed it. Um, whereas Sky didn't. Um, I just thought that if you cut away from a trophy lift when it's when you're in the the home country, it just it just smacks of we're not that bothered, and that's no fault of anyone presenting or producing. That's that's an edict from from higher up, isn't it? Um, it's almost like it's almost like they took the wrong feed because Channel Four got the feed, but listen, Sky could have easily. Put a studio in place. Yeah, 
Probably so, but as you say, they're probably, they're probably not working with with a great budget, and it's probably been been cut back against against the wishes. As as you say, it's not their fault. I don't think that Sky's coverage is for everybody. I don't think when you see it on social media, I don't think necessarily everybody enjoys Sky's coverage sometimes as much as Channel 4's, but that's just personal preference. That's not a um that's not a reflection really on anything. And sometimes people do because things haven't changed, people enjoy the newness of Channel 4. And it'd be interesting to see if Channel 4 keep the rugby for at the same length of time that Sky does, if in that time we'll be turning around going, I can't believe they've still got Adam Hills presented. I can't believe they're still going to whoever for commentary. I can't but not that's Mark when, Wilson. He's a legend. Not Matt Wilson. Yeah, exactly. That's why I stopped there because I was thinking Matt Wilson's pretty good. But yeah, it'd be it'd be really it'd be really good addition to, to Sky's commentary permanently as well at some point. Uh, I tell you is a good addition to Sky though, John Wilkin. Um he's got opinion which people might not always agree with, but he can vocalise it well and make his points. And I think he's been a really, a really good addition to the commentary team this year, permanently. I know he's obviously done the odd games, but um, it seems like he's going to be on every week, which is which is good stuff. Well, that's it. He's been on the BBC quite a bit as well, hasn't he? And he kind of... I listen to his opinion. And I listen to his opinion because he's he's been there. And he's he's been part of a Saints team for like years and years and years. He's played at the highest level, so I'm I'm quite happy to listen to him. As you say, do I agree with him all the time? Absolutely not. But you take it on board, don't you? Yeah. Listen, me and you don't agree all the time. No, exactly. We don't. So I'll make the world go round. Right. <laughs> don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We really do mean like, share and subscribe. If you can share the post on your Facebook feeds, if you can comment in the box below with your thoughts about how you think tomorrow will go, please do so. And we will catch you tomorrow for the instant fan reaction live from Weldon Road. Catch you soon.